Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I am going to present to you a super exciting challenge uh, that's featured in one of the papers. It turns out uh, that uh, the there was some information missing so I have uh, corrected that information. I've added some information to make it a valid question and that's why I called it a mutant AITS challenge. So let's see what's there in this mutant, okay? So here it is. Let me read out the question for you. A student named Narayana described a combination of two converging lenses which produces an inverted virtual image at the position of the object of the same size as the object. So here is an object and after processing through both the lenses, the final image is again formed here itself. But if the object is erect, the final image is inverted and it is a virtual image. Okay. Okay. So inverted virtual and same size as the object. The magnification produced by each lens individually is a rational number. So this is the twist here that magnification is a rational number. It cannot be just any arbitrary number. It has to be a rational number P by Q form. Okay. And then we have to comment on there are two questions uh, asked here. The first question is the possible ratio of focal lengths F1 upon F2 could be and then we have four options. 9 1 by 9 root 2 and 8 by 9 and the second question is the ratio of object distance from any lens to the focal length of the lenses must be a rational number and we have to comment on this whether the second statement is true or false so if you want you can give it a try it's a very nice question uh, good exercise for the brain and uh, i'll present my analysis right away okay i thoroughly enjoyed doing this one so let me do the analysis okay so you see uh, the object and image are formed at the same place that means what the final emergent rays must converge at the same point as the initial uh, incident rays so this is the initial rays and then uh, to converge at the same point either i could take them straight but uh, uh, why i have taken them like cr uh, cross them like this you see we also want the image to be inverted so the ray which was at the top initially after the processing it should be at the bottom and similarly the ray which was at the bottom initially must be finally at the top so this is the crux of the problem if you could visualize this then uh, things will become of course there's some calculation still to be done but this will make uh, visualization very very easy okay so uh, let me uh, read out why the, the, the justification for uh, this uh, ray diagram so what are the considerations here since the image is the same size and inverted the emergent rays should swap with the incident rays that is 1 goes to 1 dash, 1 goes to 1 dash and 2 goes to 2 dash. So there is a 2 and this goes to 2 dash and they converge at the same point but the upper ray goes to the lower ray and the lower ray goes to the upper ray that creates an inverted image. Okay. Second thing product of magnitudes of magnification from two lenses should be 1 because we want the image to be same size so magnification by the first lens should be the reciprocal of magnitude uh, uh, magnification uh, due to the second lens the magnitude should pro uh, the product of magnitudes of the magnification should be one for the image to be same size okay so that's what okay same size and then first lens should produce real inverted image and the second should produce the virtual erect image final because final image has to be virtual so obviously the processing uh, from the, the second lens happens in the end so so the image from the second lens must be virtual but you know that from converging lens the virtual image is always erect but we want an inverted image so where is the inversion happening so inversion must be happening at the lens one so this produces an uh, inverted and uh, a real image because inverted image with the converging lens is always a real image for a real object okay and this produces an erect image uh, so inverted of the erect is actually inverted so we get an inverted image of the same size so i hope these uh, considerations are clear and this leads to this ray diagram now i have added some more information here so let me explain to you what are the variables that i have introduced so let's say the distance from the first lens to the object is let us say a and let us say lambda is the magnitude of magnification from the first lens so you know that magnification is what v by u right so if this distance is a so this distance should be lambda a, where lambda is the magnitude of magnification okay lambda is the magnitude of magnification so this distance is lambda a and this distance is a okay and now let's say this distance is b then this distance must be b upon lambda why because 
uh, image coordinate divided by object coordinate is the magnification and the magnification from the second lens required is 1 by lambda why because in the first lens we wanted the magnification to be lambda so from the second lens it should be magnitude should be 1 by lambda for the magnification so if this is b then this should be b by lambda then v by u is automatically 1 by lambda so lambda magnification for this and 1 by lambda for this okay so that's what i've written let the magnitude of magnification from first lens be lambda so v1 upon u1 is lambda magnification of the second lens should be 1 by lambda that is v2 by u2 is 1 by lambda now we can use the lens equation for the first lens so you know that lens equation is what 1 by v minus 1 by u is 1 by f so what is 1 by v here see uh, image is formed here so v is lambda a and u is minus a according to the cartesian sign convention so 1 by lambda a minus 1 by minus a should be equal to 1 by f so that's what i've written okay so 1 by lambda a minus 1 by minus a is equal to 1 by f and uh, the ratio of focal lengths f1 to f2 i have assumed to be eta so if this focal length is f i am calling this focal length as eta and i am interested in f1 by f2 so that is i am interested in 1 by eta right so that's why i introduced i could e even have taken the second one as uh, f and first one as eta but it's okay so this is f and this is eta times f and i am interested in the number 1 by eta okay so now let me write the uh, lens equation for the second lens okay mm -hmm. so for the second lens if you write the lens equation you see the value of u is minus b and the value of uh, v is minus b by lambda right minus b and minus b by lambda so 1 by v minus 1 by u is 1 by f that means what 1 upon minus b by lambda minus 1 upon minus b is equal to 1 upon eta f so that's what i've written 1 upon minus b by lambda minus 1 upon minus b is equal to 1 by eta f okay where eta is f2 by f1 okay so now uh, i can express the uh, variables eta a and b i can consider three uh, okay one more thing uh, so uh, i can write uh, b by lambda as sum of these three distance see you see this distance is nothing but summation of this distance plus this distance plus this distance so b plus lambda a plus a should be equal to b by lambda so that's the third equation okay that's what i've written b by lambda is a plus lambda a plus b i hope you got it uh, a b and lambda a okay so a lambda a and b so now i have three equations uh, so this is the first equation this is the second equation and this is the third equation and i can solve this for the sim these three simultaneous equations for the variables a b and eta uh, assuming that other things are known so a b and eta i will try to find out using this okay so you can do a little maths uh, not very difficult although a little bulwark but uh, the straightforward equations so if you solve equations 1 2 and 3 you will get eta as lambda plus 1 upon lambda minus 1 whole square okay so that means what now lambda is a rational number that's given in the question and lambda plus 1 upon lambda minus 1 whole square means what the ratio of focal lengths must be square of a perfect rational number okay so it should be perfect square of a rational number okay f2 by f1 okay and also uh, if you solve for a uh, and a, a so a comes out to be lambda plus 1 upon lambda times f that means what a upon f is also a rational number why because lambda is a rational number similarly if you calculate b it comes out to be lambda plus home 1 whole square divided by 1 minus lambda times f again b is also a rational number so a is a rational number b is a rational number eta is also a rational number okay so now uh, once we have this information now it's very easy to solve uh, go uh, go for the uh, correct option okay so uh, another thing we can see is that uh, you see eta is going to be more than one see lambda plus one upon lambda minus one whole square lambda is a positive number between zero and one you see you see this distance because the second image is uh, um, magnified you see lambda times b upon this distance the v for the second lens is more than the u for the second lens that means what the second lens is producing a magnified image so therefore the first lens must be producing a diminished image that means what lambda is a positive number between 0 and 1 so if lambda is a positive number between 0 and 1 that means what this value eta should be more than 1 so we know that eta is perfect square of a rational number and eta is more than 1 that means 1 upon eta will be less than 1 and perfect square of a rational number okay so that's what i've written from the ray diagram lambda is less than 1 and lambda is greater than 0 
and also lambda is a rational number i hope you got why lambda should be less than one because the second lens definitely the image is magnified so magnified into diminished will only give you magnification one right and f1 by f2 is one upon eta that is lambda minus one upon lambda plus one whole square okay so f1 upon f2 has to be less than one now let us look at the options so from equation seven eta should be perfect square of rational number and eta should be less than one so can you see uh, an option which satisfies these two conditions perfect square and less than one so the only option that satisfies this uh, condition is one by nine so the possible uh, ratio of focal lengths can be one by nine there can if there were other options they could also have been eligible candidates but out of these four only this one satisfies the required condition okay so eta is equal to one by nine is the only option so correct option is b for this one also from 5 and 6 equations 5 and 6 uh, uh, i told you that uh, a by f is also a, la a rational number and b by f is also a rational number okay so uh, uh, what about the distance so you can see a by f so distance of object from the first lens is definitely a rational number right similarly uh, b by lambda is a rational number and if you divide this by eta is also a rational number so b by sorry uh, b by f is a rational number so b by eta lambda f is also a rational number right so i showed you so uh, this is b by lambda you divide by eta f so you get b by lambda eta f so that means distance of the object from the second lens is also a rational number therefore the statement is true so that was my analysis for this beautiful problem i hope you thoroughly enjoyed the twist that i created in this one and if you enjoyed this problem please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with all of your friends preparing for JE through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever called. Okay, so share this as much as possible with your friends through whatever medium you might be using for networking with them. And most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so right now and please help your friends subscribe to my channel. I'm sure they'll gain a lot out of it. And of course, my enthusiasm will be doubled if you help me get some subscribers. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.